Welcome, everyone, to the Kia Knicks postgame show as the Knicks play their last road game before the All-Star break and go down to the Spurs in San Antonio, 119-93. to Back in our Delta MSG studios, Bill Pito along with Wally Zerbiak. Alan Hahn joins us from his home studio, and uh, we haven't seen many of these guys. Uh, the Knicks, only down by four at the half, really struggled in the second half. And what's interesting, you, you, you get the sense that the Spurs won the game with the three-point shooting, but the reality is, is that they made 18 threes, the Spurs, and the Knicks made 15 threes. So they didn't lose the game there. And, you know, at first look, you think they just got drilled at the three-point line. That's not where it happened. No, you, you, you can't tell always who won and lost the game by the box score. I mean, you got to watch. You got to watch. I mean, it just looked like the Spurs, uh, the Knicks were a step slow on every single play. They were making careless turnovers. The Spurs don't turn the ball over. So they got a lot more shot attempts up at the basket. And they just had the energy tonight. I, I, I saw Julius Randle. It just looked like from the start of the game, he just looked like he didn't have that pep in his step like he normally does. And when he's not playing well, especially with Derrick Rose not playing, and the Knicks are missing some guys, and so are the Spurs also, uh, but the Knicks just didn't have it tonight. It was one of those games that, you know, you want to try to take some things from, but I don't think you overreact to. You Hopefully this type of performance doesn't carry on to, to further. Well, I'll use the phrase, tonight is a useless stats night. The stats don't tell the story of this game. This is one of those right. games you got to You got to see it with My your bad. eyes. No, but it, that's, that's the I best test. way to explain I it. Test. Tonight's yeah, an eye Wally test. Wally is an eye test. A hundred percent correct on this one. This is one of those where it's your eyes will tell you what went wrong, and it was an energy level that just wasn't there from the beginning. This team just didn't have it defensively, and the Spurs were keeping the Knicks in the game because they couldn't make threes early on. And then all of a sudden, the floodgates. That third quarter, really, everything everything changed. And, you know, Frank Nielakina did all he could to keep them in the game in that third quarter. We made a bunch of threes when it looked like the Spurs were going to pull away. But eventually, uh, they, they just couldn't keep keep the pace. That's really what it is. There's, there's, I could give you different numbers and stats about this game. Throw, by the way, throw my 12 three-pointers made thing out the window. Now it's 10 and 4, so maybe that's another stat we don't want to go to. But this was, this was... When, you, when you're a, def, a team that's a foundation of defense and that foundation just isn't solid, the bottom drops out. That's what this game was. They just didn't have it. Different emotion, though. Isaac. Base, the green room's in fine shape. How is the, uh, the basement? I mean, it, you didn't have the frustration tonight watching this, that's for sure, right? Remote, well, I think you okay? felt it first. Everything's fine. Yeah, no, everything's fine. Like I said, I'm, I'm doing a little more meditation now. I'm being a little bit better about things. If I, when you get to 500, you feel better about life. But... I just feel like when Derrick Rose, when the announcement of Derrick Rose not being available for this game, it already like kind of felt like, uh-oh. And then you saw the way the team came out with that lack of energy. Like, I actually texted a friend of mine in the first quarter who was asking me something, and I just said, this feels like a 20-point loss. And even though it was a close, it just feels like it's going to be a 20-point loss just by the performance, and it turned out to be. So if I got one stat right, it's that one. All right, so no Rose, no Peyton. That's 25 points yeah. per game out of the lineup. And Randall averages 23, scored only 14. So they really didn't get uh, the offense from other spots, even though they did score 93 points. But the, as, as Clyde Frazier said, the third quarter was the problem. It was at the end of the half was a harbinger of doom. We have a new phrase here. Harbinger. The San Antonio hit that three at the buzzer uh, before the half, and then they outscored the Knicks in the third quarter while a 36-21. Harbinger of doom led to the third quarter of doom. I love it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, and Patty Mills missed a couple threes that he normally makes in that first half, and then he started to get going in that third quarter. Trey Lyles, the Kentucky product, going against all the Kentuckians on the Knicks, and he was really, really good. Third quarter, just a uh, big-time performance by the Spurs. And, you know, this team has got a lot of pride. I mean, you look at the names on the back of these jerseys, there are some – you know, different names than we're used to seeing in a Spurs uniform. But it just goes to show you that coaching staff and Greg Popovich knows how to win basketball games in the NBA. He demands excellence out of his guys, and his guys improve and get better on a nightly basis. And they don't beat themselves. I mean, they only had eight turnovers. Knicks had 16. How many times did the Knicks, you know, on offense because they're missing their point guards and, 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 and you know, look a little confused? And that led to turnover. It's easy basket on the other end. Turnover, easy three on the other end. It's tough to overcome, uh, you know, in San Antonio.
But well, I, I, let's go back to the harbinger of doom because think about it. They were walking off the walking off the floor down one, right? Yeah. They were walking off the floor down one, and Pop says, "No, no, no. There's time left on that. Like there was, you know, seven tenths of a second. No, no, no. I want that possession. Give me that possession." And you saw Tom Thibodeau was furious. Wait, my guys walked off the floor. Forget it. We're not playing. Right? He just did all he could to not have to play those seven tenths of a second. Think about that for a minute. And Frank goes, tries to go above. You see him try to, he goes tr- above, then under. He didn't want to give a baseline. And, and that's right there. He gets an open look, seven tenths of a second. You think that a play like that should be insignificant. Ah, it's seven tenths. Just walk off the floor. It doesn't matter. No, it mattered to Greg Popovich. He made sure he got that possession. You know that Tom Thibodeau did not want that possession. And I imagine what that locker room must have been like at halftime, Wally, when they walked in giving up that three. And that harbinger of doom certainly led to that third quarter of doom. Got a new phrase here. I like it. Curtis you got to close the quarters or you're gonna be, it's going to be a harbinger of doom quarter. It's harbinger with a V. <laughs> Harba. Okay. Not a V. Harba. Harbinger. Cornell guy. Yeah. <laughs> Alan, Neil Aquina, 15 tonight, quickly 26. So in a lot of ways, they made up for the absence of Peyton and Rose. If you look at the box score, at least. Yeah, using, but you know what they were lacking? So they were using the three-point shot to make up for it, and that's what, that's what both of those guys were knocking down threes. But the Knicks only scored, what was it, 32 points in the paint? It's a team that averages about 48 points in the paint. And a lot of those points in the paint are because their point guards, Derrick Rose, Alfred Payton, they get into the paint and they make things happen and then kick out. So normally your guard play, the way Tom Thibodeau likes to play, is that dribble penetration, get in the paint, and then kick out. And really what you were having was the guards were the ones that were shooting the threes instead of distributing. So it was a little bit flip-flopped. So yeah, they made up for the scoring end of it, but it was a different look. But I still say it was the other end of the court. You give up 119 points against the Spurs team that normally is not a high-scoring team, you know, that's your defense. That is not a lack of offense. Neil Aquina, got to give him credit. Only his eighth game of the the year, first start, 11 points in the third quarter, and finished the game with 15. No, uh, he shot the ball really well, and he he kind of was that guy that Randall started to look for in that third quarter uh, to knock down some shots, and he did, and that was a good sign. So, you know, hopefully Frank can... Use this uh, as a positive as he moves forward. There he uses the pick and roll, gets the bucket. That's what you have to do in the NBA. But he was a minus 20. Um, so, you know, you know, Tom Thibodeau talks about making winning plays. And, yeah, he shot the ball great, and that's important. But that, that first unit didn't function the way it normally functions or it's been functioning you know, with him in the lineup. Now, I don't think that's Frank's fault. I'm not saying that, you know, it's an issue with Frank. But anytime you have a new floor orchestrator and, uh, you know, lead guard, it's a little bit of an adjustment for all the players.